Sullivan. A break of 86 to take the opening frame. So Hilva Vahidi did have a couple of chances with his second one. He broke down on 30, taking on a long-range plant. O'Sullivan so punished him. Another star-studded lineup today after O'Sullivan. It's Mark Selby, world number one. Jack Blazowski, who's been in great form this season, is also in action. And this evening, Judd Trump and Neil Robertson will be back at the table. Over on the player, Marco Fu is up against Chen Fei Long. You can watch that. And indeed, all the matches on table two throughout the week on the Eurosport player. Not an easy shot, this. He overcut it, and worse still, he has left the red. Now, Ronnie's already had a look at the the top of the two reds there to see if he can get on it. Interesting, though, what, how he feels about his game. He, he, it was a great win in the Champion of Champions. He's won it three times now. Will he remember the little spell in the final One. where he lost his way, all that wonderful century that won him the deciding frame, he takes that latter of those two memories out of that event, then I'm sure he'll play well here this week. Yes, it has to be said that Karen Wilson was a bit unlucky, wasn't he, in that final frame, knocking in colour and red simultaneously, allowing O'Sullivan the chance, which he took brilliantly, as you say. But, of course, prior to that, O'Sullivan no. had taken on a very risky double, having missed a cannon on the final red in the previous frame and he left Kyron Wilson snookered had he left that red on he might well have lost and it would have been a tough loss wouldn't it from 8-5 up but once again he did the business as he so often does remember he won five ranking titles last season his best ever tally in a single campaign he keeps producing when it matters Brian Sullivan, 13. Andy Kiss off the blue. Yeah, I'm surprised he played thin off the bunch that side. He had a very good kiss there. What a shot. One. I know he's kind of half lost the cue ball there, which won't please him. Well, here's a situation. Ronnie could have gone for that thin cut black if he was feeling that way inclined. But just to confirm, Ryan's he's played the right one. shot. He's played it well. This is what we expected, really. I have to respect the game, and that's what he's doing. That was a miscue. That was a horrid sound. And he, <laughs> I don't think he knows yet, but he's fluked one. <laughs> he didn't see it go in. He's heading back to his chair as if in disgrace. <laughs> but he's gone in and, and even Ronnie finds that funny. He had no clue he'd fluked it. Well, you kind of get the feeling he's going to need some luck today, and he certainly had some there. Walking back to his chair, fearing the worst, but then a happy ending. Hey, what's happened? Oh, that is just priceless, isn't it? See that? It's always a, a slight embarrassment when you put to a miscue like that and you want to get away from the table quickly. This is very difficult, very thin. No. 
for Hill for Not a nice point. shot to be faced with. And I think there may be a gap through to the red. Yeah, he can get right through there. Former world champion Peter Ebden in the background there. Ebden has suggested that this season might be his last. He's suffering from a chronic back problem which is affecting his ability to practice as he'd like to. He's up against Patrick Wallace today, the 2002 Crucible champ. Ronnie's had a long look at this shot. I think he had to play with the trace of left-hand side anyway to ensure the pot went in, and actually that's a very well-measured shot Eight. to control the cue ball. And he could well be away again here. No. One thing he does too is he picks up the speed of a table quickly. 60. At this level, most of them are quick and lively, but this is a different one to the one he played on in Coventry. Different brand of table, actually. 70. Back on the star tables this week. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Forty-one. Forty-two. He's a great watcher of snooker. I've watched him in the front row, seeing all the players when he's not playing. I guess he's got the best seat in the house if he's an O'Sullivan fan, but he watches shots, and I see him little smile on his face when O'Sullivan plays a good one. He's almost watching his hero here, but he's got to try and beat him somehow. O'Sullivan does his damage so quickly, doesn't he? This is already throwing ball. Quick switch of hands. No problem. Yeah, there seven. could be a plant, those two reds. You may not need it, but I thought the two reds that he's now looking at are in some sort of a plant. But that was a better shot. Delightful, Cannon. Delightful. Perfectly judged. 54. 55. Sixty-two. Two frames in, he looks fantastic. He, he looks like a man who's <coughs> not taking his opponent lightly. He looks sharp. He's playing like a man who's won two huge invitational events recently. Sixty-nine. Referee Leo Scullion is going to have to his wits about him there to get the balls out in time. And it's beautiful to watch him playing well. Always has been. 77. He'll be in his 44th year come the end of December. No evidence, really, of any decline in his extraordinary talent.
shook his head. I'm not quite sure why. It's a beautiful shot again. 86. Peter Ebden keeping a weather eye on proceedings here. No doubt as impressed as Sahil Vahidi with O'Sullivan's queuing. Picking up here in Belfast where he left off in Coventry on Sunday evening. 93. Turning it on for this Belfast crowd. Ebden appreciated that. 98. Stand by for century number 969. 104. The 21st of the season. Brilliant. Ronnie O'Sullivan at his best. A superb clearance. Another century. And Sahil Vahidi had the best seed in the house. Ronnie O'Sullivan in the mood to do more damage here in Northern Ireland. He leads by two frames to nil.